So I want to tell you this story that I've been getting ready to tell you for 20 years. It's like Game of Thrones in West Africa. Epic battles, sword and sorcery, palace intrigue, unlikely heroes triumphing over impossible adversity, and the forging of one of the greatest civilizations in history. This was the largest empire ever in Africa, at its height covering over 500,000 square miles in what are now a dozen different countries, birthplace of the world's first constitution and the University of Timbuktu. Mansa Musa I, widely believed to have been the wealthiest man in all world history, is a great-grandson of the hero of this story. Kunta Kinte, of Alex Haley's roots, is a descendant of its villain. Anyway, why it's taken me 20 years to work up the nerve to tell you this story is that it's not my story to tell. Full disclosure, I'm a white Jewish guy who grew up in the suburbs. I'm a writer and a musician who spent the last 20 years immersed in the musical literature of the Mandenkalu, the people of what used to be the legendary Mali Empire. And this whole project is really a celebration of them. My main mentor in this is a guy named Alaj Jelimamadi Kuyate. Nfa Mamadi is one of several historical and musical consultants for this podcast and for our live show, but my relationship with him is closer than that. It's Nfa Mamadi who took me in and adopted me as a jelly in the Kuyate lineage. That's why I address him with the honorific Nfa, which means my father. He's taught me most of what I know about jelia, the art of being a jelly. A jelly is a lot of things. Educator, historian, poet, musician, diplomat. There's no perfect translation in English, but if you're a fantasy nerd like me, Bard gets the closest. Deeper dives into all these cultural nuances will be coming in later episodes. You can also read articles on the subject on our blog, which you can find at tariku.net slash blog. That's T-A-R-I-K-U dot net slash blog. I decided to finally pull the trigger on this project because of something Mamadi said to me after I sang at a show we played together one night. At this show was the first time I had translated some of the lyrics I was singing into English, and I was afraid Mamadi might be angry with me about it. When we got together in his studio for our usual post-game rehearsal session, I worked up the courage to ask him how he felt about the choice I had made. We were just about to start work on a new track when I asked him, this conversation happens, as so many with Mamadi or with anyone from this region do, in a few different languages. You'll recognize English, and also French, the state language of Mamadi's native Guinea. The third language is Manding, the language of the Mali Empire. I'll translate the basic gist for you after you hear it. You gotta take the Mandingo up. You don't take it down. Mm-hmm. You take Mandingo up like that. A sabati. Yala, Ibarakana sab- sabati. Ibarakana uh, sabati la. Ibarak Maninka kan ala sabati. Badima. You do the vulgarization. Vulgarization? Yes. You, you, do, you take the Mandingo, the Mandingo power up. Oh, eh. Nkenindi. Ibrake Sababudi. Sababudi. Uh, yeah, you, you, one person, mm-hmm. one person important for Mandingo people now. Nde? Yes. How, come c'est possible? <laughs> <laughs> if you sing a Sunyata today, uh-huh. the white people can tell you, what you sing it now? Uh-huh. You explain to them, uh-huh. they gotta they like uh-huh. Sunyata, uh, about you. Okay, so there are two words in Fa Mamadi used in that clip that basically encapsulate his point. One is the French word vulgarisation, which means popularization. The other is the Manding word sabati, which means to develop, strengthen, or uphold. He liked the idea of my translating Sunjata, the story I'm about to tell you into English, because he felt it would help to popularize Manding culture among, quote, the white people, unquote. In this context, this refers to basically all non-Africans, which in turn would help to develop and strengthen the Manding Kalu at large. I sincerely hope he's right about that, and I hope you enjoy what you're about to hear. Thank you. 
It is dusk in the town of Sangaran, or the town of Doni Cree, depending on who you ask. The town is halved by a ribbon of river. The buildings of the town are of smooth, sun-baked mud brick. Grandest among these is the palace of Mansanyemo Diara, or Samo Conde, depending on who you ask, lord of the house of Conde, spired and crenellated like a gigantic ornate sandcastle. Painted by the setting sun with golden red and purple shadows, the huts of the people are squat cylinders roofed in shaggy thatch. These are organized in groups of five or six and neatly delineated into family enclosures by low walls or little gardens. Chickens mutter softly in the yards. Lean, sandy-colored dogs laze in the dirt paths. On the banks of the Sangarani River, some townsfolk take their ease after the evening meal. Men and women lounge on the banks, sharing idle conversation. Some smoke tobacco from rough-carved wooden pipes. A few of the women have rolled up their taffe, long cloth wraps dyed richly with ornate patterns to cool their feet in the river. Some are absently fishing the shallows with handheld nets. Some sing a soft call and response folk song together. We hear soft chatter among the women at first in Manikakan, then the English translation filters in. Did you hear about the princess? What about her? Eh? She stormed out of the palace this morning. My cousin saw the whole thing. I heard she made quite a scene. What was wrong with her? I heard it was the king's name she was spitting on. As for what it was about, with brothers and sisters, who knows? You should see my two go at each other. They hardly need a reason. As if on cue, we hear the screeching of a young girl of around 14 years old from further down the riverbank. Two children come running down the riverbank from the town. Dimba, a boy of about 10, has stolen his elder sister Kafune's tafe. Kafune is a tall, slender 14. Unaccustomed as of yet to the new sprouted length of her limbs, she sprints ungainly after her brother, wearing only her undergarment and a chain of beads wound around her waist for protection from sorcery. She holds in one hand her wooden sandals. General laughter and sounds of amused surprise can be heard from the assemblage of townsfolk on the riverbank. Give it back! There go your two now, Bame. Hey! Dimba! Give that back to your sister! <sighs> Won't catch me if I go in the water. Dimba! Boy, if you don't come out of there this instant, you will know me. Kafune, reaching the riverbank now. You think I won't come in there after you? I can swim. Kafune, don't you go in there after him. Ah! Oh. And there she goes, this girl. Bame, the river is deeper than it looks out there. What do you mean? Dimba is half Kafune's height, and he looks like his feet are still touching the bottom, even way out in the middle there. No, look, that's not the bottom. You see, he's too high up. There's no way the river's that low this time of year. He's standing on something. What is that? <gasps> Dimba, get away from there, now! She sprints down the riverbank after her children. The laughter of the townsfolk is turned to shouts of alarm. Get help! Get away, Dimba! Get away! Come get me! Tch. Curse that boy! I'm going in after him! Ha <laughs> ha! Mommy's swimming! What? Ah! We hear a deep burbling and a rush of water as the thing Dimba has been standing on begins to rise from the river. Sheets of river water stream off the thickly muscled back of a gigantic buffalo. Looming over the buildings of the town, its body carved from the night itself. The eyes and wicked horns are molten gold, as are the hooves, each one like an anvil, eerily illuminating the dark waters of the river from beneath the surface. 
Demba struggles and fails to keep his footing, and we hear him scream as the buffalo tosses its massive head, flinging the boy far away. Bame screams. A group of warriors arrive and launch spears and arrows at the beast. Some stick in its hide, but the buffalo simply shakes itself as though shaking off water and laughs in a deep otherworldly woman's voice as the missiles go flying in every direction. We hear deep guttural roars from the buffalo and screams from the crowd of villagers and children as it commences to trample and gore them all to death. Yes, run for your lives, children of the Kondes. Your suffering has barely begun.